my beautiful friends and welcome to your weekly horoscope for the week of October 12th where this week we have got beautiful people coming to the eat and greets. We've got Sarah Dehaven, Catherine Goshen coming this week. Sarah's going to talk about asteroids, um, Lilith and... Um, Pandora and Catherine is going to take us into a journey through the aspects so bring your chart bring your snacks show up I can't wait to see you keep in mind if you'd like to watch the eat and greets ad free you can always come over and join me on patreon as well though my friends we've got some beautiful configurations in the sky this week and some challenges to keep us on our toes as well so let's jump in here and take a look at what's going on this week right as we're coming into the week here on the 12th we've got the Jupiter Neptune sextile and Neptune is retrograde so this is going to happen between the energies of Capricorn and Pisces of course at 19 degrees so grab your chart and make sure you locate 19 degrees to see what this sextile is maybe connecting with something in your chart now as Jupiter and Neptune come into a sextile first of all when the planets have sex that's good for us right because it's not only a pocket of opportunity but we're going to intend intelligently take some action on that like we could really make something happen under there and what I love about this is you know we just had this summit with astrology university and the idea was to imagine the future and this is very much so the idea that I think of as Jupiter and Neptune come together here is it's like hey this is such a beautiful part of a major series of energies that we've been watching all year long where it's like wait how do we expand I can't quite see the vision of that oh oh I've got the vision of it you know so it's been a part of a series that has been the theme in 2020 but it's also this really great energy for taking something creative taking something that you're you maybe even weren't sure that you could do something with and turning a creative project into something genuinely profitable something that you can really not only make money with but feel valuable while you're doing it it's a really really gorgeous energy I think to be coming into the week with now we've also got mercury on the same day in a sextile to Venus so there's just sex up there in the sky like that is lovely I'm down for that right and this is going to be in Scorpio over here with mercury and Virgo over here with this Venus energy at 12 degrees now as mercury and Venus come together in a sextile this is you feel you feel chatty, right? You feel like, oh, I, I could uh, I could throw some ideas around, which what a day to have this energy that's like, hold on, let's take this creative thing, see if we can make it concrete, but let's throw some ideas around and see what can really stick here, really what's going to be valuable and valid and necessary as we go forward. So it's really a lovely day, I think, as we come into this week. Now we jump a day later and we get to the 13th and this is an energy that I think is a little bit challenging and it can present challenge, okay? We've got the sun in opposition to Mars who is still retrograde at this point. So the sun over in the energy of Libra and Mars over in the energy out of Aries. Now their opposition is going to happen at 21 degrees. So as the sun and the and Mars, so my motivation is opposing my action. So the sun moving forward, Mars is moving backwards and he's not particularly thrilled about this move backwards, but he's in a position of re-strategize Mars, re-strategize. We can't really shine in our relationships if we don't figure out what our own desires are. So what this can bring to the table is adversity truly it can bring this energy of competition it can be like you know you feel like somebody is trying to step in or these relationships are trying to step in on your individuality and that causes a little bit of hostility so this can be a day just as we get here to the 13th that can be tense now to add to that energy we're going to see mercury stepping into the retrograde energy and he's going to go retrograde at 12 degrees of scorpio now we will see mercury come out of retrograde and direct November 3rd in the energy of Libra but as Mercury comes into this um, retrograde here I think that conversation first of all goes backwards a little bit right we have to think where it's like well hold on every nobody's nobody's exempt from a Mercury retrograde so did you just hear what I'm trying to say as people and remember we may feel like people are trying to encroach on our space a little bit here did I hear correctly what you're trying to say to me now one of the things I think is so brilliant about this retrograde even at the time of that sun Mars square is it's like get back in there 
if you have a miscommunication with somebody, if you have something you were hurt about, if there was a misunderstanding, if there was a trauma, a pain, a drama, um, some passion you feel like has and needs to be uncovered, desires that you have that you haven't been speaking about, Mercury Retrograde is going to take you with Scorpio as that tour guide back down in there to have that conversation. And this is the day where I stick to it. Sometimes you have to have a breakdown before you have a breakthrough. And that is in your relationships. That's with your money. That's with yourself. That's with whatever you call God. Sometimes you got to just sling snot. You got to ugly cry in order to get to the answer. So if that's what shows up on your table this day. Instead of taking it as, oh, this is just super tense. It's terrible. When is it going to end? This could actually be a really big day of healing. And the opposition, whenever there is an opposition in the sky, we're always looking for what's the middle ground. How do we find the compromise? Where are both sides correct? And therefore we can compromise. So as that energy is presented to you, um, keep that innermost in your mind, okay? Now, as we get to the 15th, we see the sun. The sun is just running around squaring and, and tapping on things all week. So the sun is going to square Pluto. So again, we've got the sun over here in Libra. Pluto's here in Capricorn and their square is going to meet up at 23 degrees of Capricorn. Okay, so this feels like Pluto's out of retrograde at this point. So this feels like pressure right? Like somebody or you're putting pressure on yourself or there's just this pressure, this pressure to do something. And it's like, I feel like I'm like tucked in here and I've got to perform a certain way. I've got to, I've got to um, show up in these relationships a certain way. And it kind of makes you feel like you're tugged a bit out of balance. So one of the things I think of here as well is because the sun is who I am, my I am officially. So it is like ego, right? My ego is needing change here. My ego is needing transformation. My ego is running into structure. My ego is running into an authority figure. And I am being put in a position of tension where I've got to take an action. Um, hopefully not a destructive one, but sometimes you have to have a breakdown before you have a breakthrough in order to get out of this box, in order to get out of that square. But it is certainly an aspect that I think is tense and challenges who and what I think I am or who and what I think is supposed to be happening in relationships for sure. So that's going to be an interesting day. Now we've got kind of a sweet tooth that comes just behind that with having this new moon in the energy of Libra. And I do love that in Libra season, Libra wants balance. Libra is like, don't fight. Let's just, let's keep the peace. Let everybody's right, but also everybody's wrong. <laughs> you know, so there's that kind of balancing energy that I think comes with having Libra as the new New moon guide. So remember at the new moon though, we're going to plant these seeds of intention for what we'd like to begin in the energy um, of Libra. And Libra will come and kind of step in in a way that says, okay, how do we work through the conflict? How do we work through the challenge that is here in order to be our best evolutionary selves in these relationships? Now, this moon, as I'm looking at the astrology of it here, there is Mars is actually going to challenge this moon a little bit, as well as the square to Saturn, Pluto and Jupiter here. Mercury will be opposing Uranus at that time. So, I mean, and Mercury's retrograde anyway. So truly at the new moon, even though you're planting your seeds of intention, if you can avoid starting something brand new, instead, it's like get back in there get through the details, set some things right, try and get some clarity on some things from the past. If you've got fear going on, Mercury's in Scorpio, so if you've got some fears going on, get in there. What is that fear about? What are you afraid you're going to lose? You're not going to get what you want. It's not going to go how you want. Where can you get into the fear and allow the surrender to come? I also think just Scorpio in general, if you do have a challenge with a joint resource, um, a person, place, or things that you have joint resource with, this is a time to detox that or have that conversation. Just get in there and handle any of the difficulties that need to be massaged out at this particular moon in order to have that Libra balance that you're trying to plant those um, or set those intentions of at this moon, okay? Now, as we end the week and we're coming to the 18th, we've got kind of a busy day as well. We've got the sun now squaring Saturn. You see, the sun's just running around. My ego has taken on everything all week 
week long. Can you see how this could potentially be a challenging week? So we've got the Sun squaring Saturn, so this will be Libra Capricorn at 26 degrees, as well Venus is opposing Neptune who is retrograde so between Virgo and Pisces and we've also got Mars who is retrograde um, squaring against Jupiter so you know, in between Aries and Capricorn at 19 degrees so it is at the end of this week I really have a flashback back to some energies in in April right? Like in April, what was delayed for you? What felt like it got kicked off course besides your whole life with a pandemic? What seemed like it showed up as challenge for you? But it was like, it's not, it's not over. It's just been on pause. Now, as this day comes along, um, what's happening is that Things are starting to come back online or you're getting a perspective around things. And it's like, don't take on everything all at once today. You're still doing some reconciling from this week. You know, protect and pay attention to your energy this week. You're not going to have everything to give. So many of these energies as they're coming together are hitting a retrograde are hitting, you know, Mars being retrograde, Neptune being retrograde here. The sun is forcefully taking on Saturn. So it's like there are breakthroughs available. Things are coming back online. You have a different understanding of them, but trying to fix it all, take it all on, begin something is not the, it's not the best time. Sunday is a beautiful day as well. If you needed to, have hard conversations to do that but if you also needed to have hard conversations by yourself or you needed to work on a project by yourself this is a great time to do that and allow yourself the time to process and assimilate information that has come up for you. I do have this question for you this week whomever you are with this Neptune retrograde is it um someone it seems like someone is putting you in a position to try and get you to say something that you maybe don't all the way believe right now. Maybe your ideas or your ideals or your values around this have changed. And so you're not fully vested in that. So, you know, or if you have children, if this is happening in the fifth house area, somebody could be trying to kind of get one over on you. So I just want you to be mindful of that. That's not fear-based. Don't be fearful. Pay attention. If you're not sure, if you have that something in your heart or your gut that lights up, that's like, eh, pause. Be with that. You know what? Only emergencies are emergencies. I only learned that like five years ago. So if somebody's asking you for something or to do something or to respond to something, it's not an emergency. You have a minute to pause and to breathe and to think through what's going on around you. Not let your ego be clashing in with it. Not clash with another human being if you don't have to, but also look around at what's going on. You're in the process of digging through some truths this week. So nothing is an emergency except for an actual emergency, okay? All right, you guys, I do think it's going to be a trying week and we don't have a ton where I tell you that, but I do think that this one will be a trying week, but there's a lot of grit that is available in this week as well. So don't forget that. And we have got some beautiful eat and greet guests this week who I think will really add to the conversation of how we process through a lot of what will be coming up. So I look forward to seeing you in the eat and greets, hearing your feedback on what they share as well on the other side. All right, my beautiful friends, like this video, comment, share, subscribe. Hopefully you have checked out your yearly forecast and many more like November and December are on the way um, as well here just shortly, okay? All right, you guys, I love you. Have a great week.